It's finally happening. We are leaving. <laughs> I'm Krista, and that's me one year ago celebrating the start of my fourth cruise ship contract as a professional dancer. This was one of my longest contracts to date, having spent 39 days in rehearsals followed by 273 days on the actual ship for a contract total of 312 days. And so I wanna go from the very beginning to the very end and show you guys exactly what a full contract as a performer looks like on cruise ships. Good morning. Okay. Whew. Oh my god, it's freezing. <laughs> I'm on my way to go get some blood work done. I have to go get that done for my medical for Royal Caribbean. So and after that, I have to go do the actual medical. So I'll fill you in when I get there. But let's go get some blood work done. So the job actually starts before you even leave your house. And the biggest hurdle is usually the medical exam. Of course, the company wants to make sure you're healthy and fit for duty. And so this exam is no joke. Hi there, I'm just calling because I just finished my medical. They did a vision test. They did like a color vision test, a hearing test, which was just her like turning away from me and whispering colors. And I had to repeat them back to her. I guess that counts as a hearing test. A chest x-ray. The doctor just like came in and asked me like some questions. Once the medical is cleared, you have to make sure you have all your required visas for the place that you're visiting. And of course your passport. Visas will also depend on where you're from. As a US citizen, I didn't have to get any visas for this itinerary. There's also signing your contract and just overall a lot of paperwork. Once all of that is done, the joy of packing up your entire life commences. This is all of the stuff I'm gonna try to fit into three suitcases. The company normally pays for two checked bags and then you obviously bring a carry-on and a personal item. This can be tough as a performer because I need all of my regular and show makeup, stuff for my hair, rehearsal clothing, nice cocktail attire for the evenings, and of course, everyday outfits. Somehow I manage to make it work each time but it's always a mess before it gets better. Then it's time to say goodbye to your family and friends. My family threw this cute little going away party for us, which was so nice. And then we were off. Today is Saturday. We are finishing up our second week of rehearsals here in Miami. Rehearsals are normally six to seven hours a day, six days a week. We have Sundays off. Today's Saturday, so we have tomorrow off. I'm very excited for a day off because my body needs it. It's just a lot to learn all of this material in such a short amount of time. Uh, we're here for six weeks, which is actually kind of a long time to learn two shows, but you kind of have to push every single day. You're putting so much new material into your brain and then trying to dance it right after you learn it. Um, so it's just a lot. So unlike every other department on the ship, we don't actually go straight to the ship. We have to go to rehearsals first, which is where we learn all of our shows. As a dancer, you are on your feet for eight to 10 hours a day, often in heels, learning new choreography that you have to remember right away, which is admittedly not my strong suit. Your days consist of learning new material for eight hours, going home and reviewing that material so that it's ready for the next day to be performed. There is no going back to review. You have to know it. And so it is stressful to say the least. We often take videos after we learn a new number so that we have reference for practicing later. One of the scariest parts of rehearsals is your office run. You'll wear all black and perform your show in a studio for casting, other casts, and anyone else from the office who decides to come. I have heard horror stories of people getting fired after an office run or being told that they need to work on certain things to keep their job, so needless to say, it stresses me out. <laughs> Rehearsals are a time that you have to put your worries and stress behind you and just put in the work. The actual studios for Royal are stunning, but the living space, not so much, but thankfully it's just only for a few weeks and they provide basic things like sheets, kitchen essentials, and towels, so you're ready to go. And then we could just walk over to the studios every day that we had rehearsal. It's dangerous here. He's like, don't touch me. He was looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're out of here. You're dead. We're out of here. Except I've got PT in the morning, but still we're out of here. Good morning. It is 1.45 a.m. Yep. And we are heading to the airport. After six grueling weeks in the studio, we flew to Baltimore to board the ship. Good morning, Baltimore! 
<laughs> for some reason, we got picked up at 1.45 a.m. for a 6 a.m. flight, so to say we were delirious would be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Usually after your flight, you'll just head straight to the ship, but we actually had the entire day in Baltimore, which was amazing because we were able to run to Target and a couple other places to get things for our cabin and any other essentials. Um, I got my silk pillowcases, huge blanket. I also got a pillow, dry shampoo, hairspray. We got sunscreen. We got a laundry bag, command hooks and magnets, mouthwash, detergent, Clorox wipes, dish soap, and a bottle brush. We're gonna go to dinner down in the hotel lobby because Royal Caribbean pays for it. <laughs> um, you get like a stipend for a dinner and also for breakfast tomorrow. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna go to bed because we are exhausted. So yeah, that's it. And so early in the morning on April 8th, we were picked up and we headed to the ship. That's mine. Our bags are on the trolley and we're ready to go. Woo! <laughs> Okay, I know I said that rehearsals are the hardest part of any contract, but I forgot about install. This is usually a two week period, depending on how many shows you have, where you'll be trying on all of your costumes and the costumers will be making adjustments as necessary. You're sitting around waiting for lighting cues to be set. It's your first time on stage, so you're figuring out your spacing, how you'll enter and exit, what the set will be doing while you're on stage. You're figuring out sound for the vocalist, all of these things that need to come together to create a show. And usually you only have two to three days her show until opening night. One by one, you'll open a show, and the next day, you're back in the theater to get the next one up and running. Thankfully, we only had two shows, so install wasn't too bad. That was until the weather decided to turn for the worse. I have been violently ill since I got here. I was yeah. sick yesterday. I mean, everyone. Some, some everyone. Robert was like, so, some everyone's. Some everyone's over there as well. I felt really sick, and then... <laughs> I was like, I can handle it. And then I went to the mess and then I was like, I actually can't handle this. <laughs> and then I was sick. I didn't take a ton of videos on the day that it was actually really rocky because I was throwing up. But normally when it's really bad, you'll call the bridge and see what like the listing number is. And we will always cancel a show or a rehearsal if we're listing more than three degrees. And we called the bridge and they were like, um, yeah, the maximum list right now is nine degrees. Needless to say, we did end up canceling rehearsal and everything was better the next day, but that was a rough one. And then while all of this rehearsal and craziness is happening, you also have to do a lot of safety trainings your first week on board. So some of these things include jumping into a pool and turning over a life raft. She did it! Filling a lifeboat to capacity. This is my least favorite thing to do. I hope to never have to do it in real life. Mom, can you come get me? I'm scared. <laughs> Safety is obviously very important on ships and so that's something that every crew member has to do. So install has ended and it is finally time to get into a little bit more of a routine on board. Most of the itinerary was in the Mediterranean, which was an absolute dream. Our cruises were seven days long and we were on an A, B, C, D rotation. So we would repeat an itinerary every four weeks. The weekly schedule usually looked something like this. Monday was our turnaround day. This usually consisted of Muster 2.0, which is the guest safety drill. In the evening, we would have our welcome aboard show, and then it was time to head to the welcome aboard party. Usually we just did some sort of line dancing, watched the balloons drop, and then kind of just got the party started with the guests. Tuesday was Can't Stop the Rock show day. In the morning, we'd have our tech run where we run the show and ensure all of the technical elements are good to go. We don't wear costumes or sing, dance full out. It's really more about the technical elements to make sure that they're ready for the evening. Then we'd have a little bit of time Time to rest before the show at night. Wednesday was often a sea day. The sea days usually looked like teaching a dance class, doing the entertainment talk Q&A, or the 70s dance party at night. Other times we might have some rehearsal for a reblock or whatever reason, or sometimes we would do a dance class. And that would usually just be our dance captain giving us some sort of class to keep up on our skills. 
Thursdays, we usually had the day off besides drill. Drill usually lasted about an hour and then we would have the rest of the afternoon to do whatever we wanted. And then Friday was usually always completely off, which was amazing to have a full day off. A lot of the times we would get off in the morning, head into whatever town we were in, maybe grab a coffee and lunch and then just explore around the town a little bit. Saturday was stage just green day, so it was very similar to Can't Stop the Rock where we would have our tech run in the morning, the afternoon off, and then the show at night. And then Sundays was the last day of the cruise, so we would have our farewell show. We would also do the flag parade, which if you've been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, you've definitely seen the international flag parade, which is always really nice. And then we would blow up the balloons for the welcome aboard party the following night. As you can see from that schedule, we only had one sea day, which means that we were able to get off in the ports every other day, and we were in the Mediterranean, so there was so much to see and do in these ports. It was incredible. I think one of the best, if not the best part about working on cruise ships is the travel, because you get to see amazing places like this. Uh, you wake up in a new country almost every single day. Good morning from Santorini. Okay, we're in Malaga today. Hello from Barcelona. We're going to Florence today. We're going to Rome. We're at the Vatican. Mykonos, Athens, Greece. Corfu, Greece. We are in Sicily. Today we're in Palma de Mallorca. We made it to Portugal. In the Quitos. So happy to be here. <laughs> contracts this one was filled with a lot of extra rehearsals it's normal to do a few reblocks within your contract you know people get sick it's a long time someone might get like minorly injured and have to take a couple of weeks off oh and also if you don't know what a reblock is it's when someone is missing and so the show has to kind of be reworked so that everything looks good spacing wise and all of the tracks are covered but when i say we did a reblock almost every single show I'm not exaggerating. Maybe we would stay in the same reblock for a while, but like the original show that it was supposed to be, we did less than half the amount of times. Andrew got super glue in his eye, and we're trying to decide if we're gonna cancel or do a reblock. <laughs> we are gonna. We're doing a reblock now. We're doing it now. I knew it. So yes, there were many times where we had all these extra rehearsals and stress, but at the end of the day, I was in Europe and I was traveling. I was dancing and singing. How can I really complain? Usually if we had the evening off, we might head to crew bar to play games with the cast, grab a glass of wine or just watch a movie. Or honestly, I'm pretty low key, so I'm okay just chilling with my book and maybe watching Sail Away. Occasionally there would be a crew event like wine and cheese night, bingo, waffles and ice cream on the bridge, all these things that we would go to. But I will be honest, most parties start at like 11 because that's when most of the crew is off and I'm just like in bed at 11. So <laughs> my first contract, I was at every single party, but this contract, I think I went to maybe one. I always appreciate these events though that they put on. It really helps with the crew morale and just brings the whole ship together. As a cast member, we were also able to use the guest facility. Most nights we would just go to the wind jammer for dinner, which is the buffet. On occasions, we would also go to the main dining room for dinner or a cocktail. And then we would also like to go see the shows in the theater a lot of the time. But most of the time we would just stay in crew area. We couldn't really be bothered to get dressed up and ready. Cause of course we can't look like bums going into guest area. So usually only for like birthdays or our anniversary would we get all dressed up, go out for drinks and dinner. With this contract being so long and having so many highs and lows, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the world and about myself. I was dance captain very briefly. You're looking at your newest dance captain. I never really saw myself in that role and so it was exciting and challenging. I learned that in Europe, coffee is different than it is in the United States. And sometimes when you order something, it's probably not gonna be what you thought you ordered. <laughs> Here you go, Krista. I told you. <laughs> I learned not to take things so seriously, especially when everything in life is temporary. <laughs> I, I learned to say yes to more things and really face my fears. <laughs> this is best. I learned the hard way to never take the ATM's conversion rate in Europe and to always take your bank's conversion rate. 
I lost like $30 one time. I learned to accept people as they are and that you don't have to be best friends with everybody. I learned that I don't like 11 month contracts. They are just too long. I learned that I have a hard time being in the moment and not stressing about the future or the past. And so I'm working really hard on just being present. And I also learned that in Europe, they say this. Mouth I stroke the dog. <laughs> in uh, Europe, they say stroke so a dog cute. instead of pet a dog. And it just sounds inappropriate. After about 267 days and one cruise left, it was time to start packing up. It's always such an odd feeling, packing everything in this tiny room. You find souvenirs you bought from the places that you went, reminiscing on everything that was the last 270 whatever days it was. It can be such an emotional roller coaster because you're thrilled to be going home to see family and sleep in your own bed. But then you're sad to be leaving this adventure and the people you met and you might never see any of them again. People are from all around the world and while you may see them on another ship, that is never guaranteed. You honestly get pretty good at saying goodbye because throughout your contract, people will be coming and going all the time. But as a cast, you are contracted together. You board together, you leave together, unless four people leave in the middle. But for the most part, you're all together and you've sort of become this family. A very dysfunctional family, but how could you not when you spend so much time together? There were arguments, laughing, crying, complaining, every single emotion felt, but when you're at the end, you really mostly remember the good stuff. Places you went, the food you ate, the laughs you had, the fails on stage. Sorry, Max. And you just feel insanely grateful for this opportunity that you've had. Good morning. I cannot believe I'm saying it, but today is the last day on the Enchantment of the Seas. This is it. 11 months of my life. It's come to an end. I am so grateful for the time that I've gotten on cruise ships and all of the people and experiences that it's brought into my life. And I wanted to thank you guys for supporting me and being there for the whole journey. I really appreciate you guys so much and I really hope to be back on board soon. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Krista Dawson's YouTube, stay tuned. <laughs>